The comments, views, and opinions expressed in the podcast are those of the speakers and do not necessarily represent the views of Point72 Academy. All information provided herein is for informational purposes only, is not investment advice, and should not be deemed as a recommendation to buy or sell securities. All investments involve risk, including the loss of principal. This podcast does not constitute an offer to sell or the solicitation of an offer to purchase any security or investment product. Any such offer or solicitation may only be made by means of delivery of an approved confidential offering memorandum. This podcast may not be copied, and it may not not be distributed or furnished to or used by anyone other than the intended recipient without the express written consent of Point72. When we were starting the academy program, one of the things that PMs constantly brought up was we don't want you to teach them our process, we want you to teach them a skill set. We want them to have the core building blocks that, so that the academy members can then be plug and play on teams. And I think we definitely held true to that in terms of focusing on making sure that we learn the core skill sets of modeling, how to understand a business. A lot of these skill sets that you're taught in the academy and then taught when you're on a team is something that's broadly applicable across most careers. That's Joe. He helped me launch the Point72 Academy, design the curriculum, and eventually joined the academy to become an investor himself. Today, he's a long short analyst covering healthcare at our firm. Our academy graduates emerge from the program with financial modeling skills, research proficiency, and a deeper understanding of how to analyze companies. These are skills that can be applied to long short investing, but also more broadly. In this episode, we'll show you where this career can take you. I'm Jamie Goodfriend, director of the Point72 Academy. Since 2015, we've helped more than 125 recent grads and early career professionals discover an investing career and earn an analyst role with us. One of our goals when we envisioned the Academy was to take a holistic approach and teach skills and practices that would be applicable across all industries. In this episode, you'll hear from Joe Moynihan, who worked closely with me to architect, launch, and grow the Academy. I invited Joe to talk about why he joined the program he helped create and how he earned an analyst role at our firm. Then you'll hear from two investors at Point72 Ventures, Trip Schreiner, a managing partner, and Ishan Sinha, VP and Academy grad, comparing long, short, and venture investing, qualities that make a good candidate, and career advice for early professionals. Enjoy. Joe, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. You helped us launch the Point72 Academy way back in 2015. And, and back then, you were a recent graduate with one year of investment banking experience. And you turned to today, and now you're a long, short analyst covering healthcare at our firm. Let's start at the beginning. What were those early days like? My role when I first joined the firm was a dual part role. Worked very closely with you on helping build out the curriculum, but also was working very closely with the Academy Associates going through the program to help teach them, primarily starting with like modeling, but kind of how to ramp on companies and ultimately like how to like become an analyst. And then over time, it moved more and more into like the, into a teaching role. So let's talk about where your career took you from that point where we started building content and curriculum together. Uh, what, what, you know, what happened in your mind next that made you want to move on from that? And, and what are the options you thought about at the time? I knew that I wanted to become an analyst at some point in my career. We spent about, I would call it maybe two, two-ish years um, help, like building out that initial academy program. And we would create new content for each class, but we had built out like our core structure. And at that point, it became clear that the academy program was a success. And so the next step was to expand it internationally. We were looking to build it in Asia and in London. I personally had never lived outside of the United States. And so it was like both a really cool career experience and life experience for me uh, to move over to Hong Kong because I got to kind of help build a business, which is something that I, I find incredibly interesting and valuable, um, but also got to interact a lot more like directly and more frequently with analysts and portfolio managers on a day-to-day -day basis, which like gave me more of a window into what that role kind of entails. What do you remember the most, or, or what would you say were some of the highlights uh, of the curriculum when we first were thinking it through? I think one of the first things I learned when joining the firm was like what you taught me around know your customer. And so I think what was really interesting to me is a lot of people, if they were given the opportunity to build a curriculum for an academy program like this, they would develop it in a vacuum and then kind of push it onto the end consumer. And what was interesting to me is that, of course, we developed what our expectation was around what the core building blocks are to make 
a successful analyst, but we included our end consumer, the PMs, in every step of the process. And so the core skills being modeling, we had we had a number of professors come in who from esteemed universities that would teach things like corporate finance and uh, operational strategy and modeling. But I think what was like equally as important was having these portfolio managers come in, be bought into the process and have them come in and teach like, okay, you've learned these, you've developed these core skill sets that you would learn at an MBA, but how do you actually apply this to the real role? That tradition has definitely continued. Portfolio managers still come in and teach modules on on their coverage to analysts at the firm. Um, and so there's a lot, there's still a lot of interaction. So it's interesting. You actually went through the academy program, and I guess you probably you know you're the best person to ask this question to. How would you say that the curriculum and the flexibility of the curriculum helped you adapt as you rotated through a few different teams yourself? When we were starting the academy program, one of the things that PMs constantly brought up was we don't want you to teach them our pro- teach them a process. We want you to teach them a skill set. We want them to have the core building blocks that so that the academy members can then be plug and play on teams. There's like a lot of these skill sets that you're taught in the academy and then taught when you're on a team that are kind of broadly applicable to a number of careers. As you can imagine, understanding how the markets work, understanding macro, understanding how companies make money is something that's broadly applicable across most careers. And so I've seen examples of people who, for example, have data science backgrounds who wanted to try a career in investing, but found that this specific role wasn't for them. And they went and joined the market intelligence group at our firm um, and are able to participate in the investing process, but really focus on the aspect of it that they enjoy. I've seen people go from public equities investing to things like venture capital, where you still get to analyze businesses and you're still able to um, value companies, but you don't have that day-to-day, second-to-second like stock price movement. And so I, I definitely think the skill sets that I've was I taught in the academy, was taught in the academy, and now continue to learn on a day-to-day basis as a long, short analyst would definitely be applicable to other careers. So what made you realize you wanted to then pivot your career and move on to become an analyst? Just by nature of kind of being so involved in the academy program on a day-to-day basis, like the way that we structured the academy program for the most part is a template for or is kind of mimicking what you would do as an analyst. And so I just think all in, it was something that was always in the back of my mind um, and something that always appealed to me, but I, it took time for me to build the skill set to get there. So you decided to go through the academy program yourself, which is interesting considering that you helped build it. Why did you do that? Yeah. I mean, as you can imagine, there's a lot of differences to between kind of teaching and doing. Even though I had been helping run the academy, it, it seems odd that you would run the academy program and then go into it, but they're just two very different skill sets. And so realistically, if I wanted to be placed on a team, I needed to have the, the, the practice and the muscle memory of kind of ramping on companies myself, coming up with my own views, building out my own models and doing that over and over again. The academy program provided me with that opportunity and I was very grateful that the firm was willing to, to underwrite that for me. So you graduated the academy, you ended up joining this healthcare team, and then I guess over time you've actually had additional academy grads join this team. What have you observed over time in terms of the graduate pool and, and how diverse and, and differentiated their, their thought processes can be? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like the whole purpose of why we started the academy program in the first place was to get access to talent that other firms couldn't because everyone was fishing in the same pond. And we decided that it made a lot of sense to go directly to the universities to get access to all of the talent. We've hired a lot of people from a lot of different schools, different majors, come from different countries, like just a lot of different backgrounds. And I think it's inter- it's been interesting that I remember listening to different pitches, like for our summer internship, for example, we'd have 40 interns pitch the same stock. And you could see people with, we had interns who came from coding backgrounds. We had interns who came from science backgrounds. We had interns who came from liberal arts backgrounds. And they'd all pitch the same stock and they would obviously approach it from very different, in very different ways. But those three, those three like people could have each have pretty excellent pitches. They would just be approached from very different ways and their variant views would be different, would be based on different things that that starts to permeate through the organization as you have more diversity of thought. How do you think the culture at the firm has helped enable the success of the academy? 
we have a culture where like analysts can really interact with each other and I can talk with other PMs and learn from them. Like there's, there's this like cross collaborative culture that exists at point 72 that I think isn't the case at some other companies. And so I personally have been kind of very pleasantly surprised at, at how, how invested a lot of like senior people at the firm are in developing younger people. And it, and I think my, like my career trajectory thus far at the firm has been like a testament to that. One of the goals when Steve envisioned the academy was to take a holistic approach and teach skills and practices that would be applicable across all industries. You heard Joe talk about his journey within our firm, but we wanted to hear more about his path before he got here and how his hobbies and liberal arts education informed his way of thinking about the world. Growing up, my, my dad was a lawyer. When I was very young, that was what I thought my career, my career path was going to be. So as a kid, I, I love to read. As I got older, I always found it interesting to try to like understand what motivates very successful people, like what drove them and what got them to where they were and like what were like pivotal points in their life that led to that. Like, I think it's also just helped me in, in terms of asking questions. That's like this whole job. I knew like probably around the age of like 15, 16 that I wanted to move in, into like a career in investing. I like the meritocratic aspect of it. There is an element of if you do well, you get rewarded for that. I like that in every aspect of my life. I like meritocracy and like healthy competition. But I think the other piece of it that's really <clears throat> that really drew me to this career is how dynamic it is. There's very few careers, especially like coming out of the academy program, for example, if you're like a 23, 24 year old, you're talking to CEOs, CFOs of companies and like coming up with ideas. And there's very few careers where at such a young age, you're given the opportunity to have so much responsibility. Um, and I think that's that definitely is the philosophy of of the academy. The whole purpose of it is to bring together people from a variety of different backgrounds who have a variety of different skill sets and personalities and and to really teach them like your first year, everything is new, uh, especially if it's a sector that you knew nothing about before, like every single thing is new. Um, and so it's a very steep ramp and you never feel like fully comfortable, but like there's there's never a downside to learning something that is completely new to you and completely foreign to you. And, and, and that makes you uncomfortable. Like the, those are always things where you learn the most. That was Joe Moynihan talking about how his love for books and practice in critical thinking prepared him for his role today. Next, I want you to hear from Trip Schreiner and Ishan Sinha. Trip is a managing partner at Point72 Ventures. He helps to build the next generation of companies using technology to transform finance. Ishan joined our firm through the Point72 Academy. He graduated and transitioned quickly to a role on our ventures team, where he's currently a vice president. I'm Trip Schreiner. I'm uh, one of the managing partners at Point72 Ventures, so help oversee the building and management of the business, and then also work closely with our fintech, crypto, and consumer teams. I'm Ishan Sinha. I'm a VP here on the Point72 Ventures team, where I work uh, on consumer investments. I view Ishan as a thought partner. Um, I think one of the the skills that I value in this business and one that uh, I certainly see in him is a high degree of intellectual curiosity. Uh, one of the unique things about venture is you are consistently seeing new ideas, new opportunities, new markets. And so uh, Ishan's been, uh, for the years that we've worked together, really a leader in terms of diving into those new opportunities. Trip uh, has been my mentor for, at this point, the, the bulk of my career. As a leader, he is uh, he's great. He's been amazing to sort of learn from. I would say Trip's best quality is uh, he's a great listener, which uh, makes him really perceptive um, about the world. I have a very distinct memory of, I think, uh, very early on in my time at Point72 Ventures, Trip asked me for my opinion on a, on a company. Uh, and, you know, a week or two, and I had frankly no idea what I was doing. But, you know, I think that's very emblematic of, of him as a leader, that he wants to learn from everyone around him, even if they're junior, um, which I think is also a big characteristic of this firm. I think everyone here values everyone's opinion. I do a couple of things uh, as the managing partner of the business. Uh, I oversee the investment process and really help guide the team toward uh, better understanding markets, forming conclusions around where we want to invest, and then driving 
uh, those conclusions into investable opportunities. Where I probably spend the bulk of my time, though, is uh, with our portfolio companies. You know, one of the things that is unique about venture, and, and certainly is uh, in contrast to the long short side of the business, is strategic guidance. Whether it's more uh, blocking and tackling from a business building perspective, a lot of my time is spent with uh, portfolio founders and, and CEOs making sure that we as an institution are helping them uh, as best we can. I would say my job uh, starts very top down, you know, high level thematic research. And then I also spend a lot of time after investing around portfolio support, working with, uh, with the founders that we invest in, sitting on boards, things like that. Some of the founders we work with are actually also academy grads from Point72. I think, like a lot of people graduating college, the important thing to me at the outset was building up a base skill set that could provide me with some flexibility down the road. Um, and as with a lot of people in financial services, that translated itself into uh, investment banking. So I did that um, for uh, quite a while, uh, going into, through, and then out of the financial crisis, uh, and realized that ultimately that wasn't what I wanted to do. So I was able to m make an internal move um, at the bank I was working at into an impact investing role. And so what that meant was uh, we were making investments in businesses providing goods and services to lower income populations, mostly in developing markets. Um, a lot of it was in financial services, but we looked at healthcare, education, sanitation, those types of things. Um, and to a certain degree, I, I figured that would be my career trajectory. But my shift formally into venture uh, is actually largely the result of regulation. So uh, the Volcker rule came to pass. Uh, there was a lot of consolidation of principal investment activity at the banks. And I came into work one day and was told I was now part of the corporate venture team. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of people say that they stumbled their way into venture. I don't think that many people say they have Paul Volcker to thank for their move into venture. Uh, and I've been doing it ever since. My dad is actually a founder. So I, I uh, had exposure to, I guess, entrepreneurship really throughout my life. Fast forward a couple of years, um, graduated college, also went down the investment banking route and ended up at Point72 where you know I joined the academy thinking I was going to be a long, short investor. The academy was great. I learned so much. I mean, like the, the core of that experience was evaluating businesses, right? And I picked up a lot of sort of, I guess you could call it technical skills around financial modeling, um, which I candidly was was not great at before. Um, probably the most valuable part of the academy for me was after we sort of finished our classes, there was probably a month or two where every week a different portfolio manager would come in and assign a stock to us on Monday. And on Friday, we had to go back and and basically give give him or her a long, short, long or short recommendation, right? And that was that was the most fun I think I've ever had. It was just every week you get to learn about a different industry. You get to um, really like build an opinion on something. Um, your opinion here was 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 valued, and um, just got the chance to kind of deep dive into a bunch of different sectors and kind of learn what what you like, what you don't like, and 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 so from that, I just kind of learned uh, so much about evaluating companies. And so, in terms of how does that translate into venture? I mean, our core job is still the same thing, right? Um, is you meet a bunch of companies and you got to you got to decide, you know, which ones you you want to invest in. And so there are certainly differences between the long short role which I was sort of trained to do and and the venture role, but um by the end of the core of the job is the same thing. I think particularly at a place like Point72, there are a number of similarities between what we do on the venture side and what is done on the long short side. The two that come to mind are First, deep domain expertise. If you talk to the PMs or the analysts on our platform, they deeply understand the industries in which they invest and the companies within those industries. And that uh, is really similar to how we've built our model, where whether you're on fintech or on deep tech or on enterprise, you are a domain expert in that space. Uh, and the second thing is the process orientation. There are three primary things that I'm looking for in new candidates. First, intellectual curiosity. We are constantly uh, looking at new themes, looking at new markets, meeting new businesses, and you really have to have a passion about doing that work and going deep in order to be successful. The second thing is intellectual honesty. And you know, I, I think within the venture space, it's a, it's a small universe, and it is one that uh, runs the risk of groupthink fairly often. And so, I'm looking for and people coming on the platform are people who are going to 
do real work and arrive at conclusions based upon that work as opposed to understanding which investors are investing in other businesses. That is something, I think, among the qualities of a new candidate that we value most highly. I'd add to that to say you have to have interpersonal skills in this industry. You know, we're not stock picking. We're, we're largely in the business of selling capital. Uh, and that requires a lot of interpersonal skills. It, it requires having a founder understand that you deeply understand their business and that you can be a strategic partner for them. And so I think that's generally served me well. I echo the interpersonal skills. I think that's really important. I would say the other thing that makes for a good venture investor uh, is just passion, right? At the end of the day, you're kind of in the business of, of learning and hopefully you just have whatever sector it is that you cover, you're just you're just addicted to, to learning more and more and more about that because the world is ever evolving. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully you're keeping on top of all of that. The thing I'd add to it is the people to build something from nothing and to be able to get involved with them at the ground floor and see how they grow their business and how they grow professionally is extremely rewarding. To go from two guys with a pitch deck talking to you about an idea to four years later, them having a real business, I, I don't can't think of anything more rewarding within financial services than that. I think one of the, the things that uh, you hear senior management say here is, we will give you the resources to succeed. And uh, I think you, you see that throughout. You see that in the way that uh, we are able to run our day-to-day -day business, and you see it in the support we get from people across the organization or from people who are supporting us on a day-to-day -day basis, everyone from technology to legal to compliance. Yeah, if I could add one more thing, one of the things I really value about the culture here is the commitment to intellectual honesty. And I think that comes out in the form of, I would say, constructive and respectful debate. Right. Anytime someone has an idea, um, I think everyone uh, is generally supportive but wants to test it, and they they test it in 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 respectful ways. It always kind of pushes my thinking. And so, I, if I can pinpoint like the thing that's led to my development the most over the last couple of years, it is the fact that people ask just good questions, right? That force me to go back and think and reflect on my own theses and ideas. And uh, I think that's very unique. That was Trip Schreiner and Ishan Sinha talking about how the skills and lessons learned in the academy extend beyond long short and apply to their careers at Point72 Ventures. I'm Jamie Goodfriend, and this is Becoming a Hedge Fund Analyst inside Point72 Academy. Listen to our entire series to hear from portfolio managers, analysts, and others on the ins and outs of this industry and learn how you can become a part of it. Visit our website at point72.com forward slash academy to learn more about how we are training the next generation of investors. Thanks for listening.